Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is gonna be on CrossFit. Is CrossFit making you sick? So if anyone doesn't know about CrossFit, it's been around for about the last 10 to 15 years or so. It's a type of movement, essentially a type of exercise that involves a lot of compound functional movement patterns that are linked together in like a circuit. So you may do a pull up to a push up to a squat. It may have a lot of medicine ball movements. It may have a lot of Olympic lifting movements. It may combine a lot of movements back to back for time called Metcons. They have various names attached to them and it may emphasize power or Olympic lifting movement. Again, there's some good to it and there's some bad to it. The bad part is a lot of these gyms and a lot of these CrossFit places, they don't have a good on-ramp. So if you don't have a good on-ramp, it's technical, it's very technical to learn some of these skills and if you do them improperly, you can hurt yourself. That's number one. And a lot of times there's a lot of emphasis on reps during the Metcons and people will basically sacrifice rep technique for getting more reps. So I see a lot of patients get injured and coming into my office with that. Now, that being said, I see a lot of patients that are fatigued and not in good shape from a metabolic hormonal perspective, whether it's thyroid, adrenal, gut health issues, and they're doing CrossFit and they're doing it multiple times a week. And it's part of what's making them sick because their hormonal constitution is, is very stressed, right? So when we have, we talk about stress, we talk about it from the window or the lens of our nervous system. So our nervous system is kind of how our body takes in information and then also how it brings information from the brain back out either to communicate to a gland like our adrenals to make adrenaline or cortisol to deal with stress to various uh, other glands to make hormones and also to our muscles to move. So again, nervous system information in afferent, information out through movement or hormonal function, that's efferent, afferent, efferent. Efferent, it's exiting. So information's exiting the body. Now most people, because of stress, right, physical, chemical, emotional stressors, they're activating a lot of their fight or flight nervous system. That's the sympathetic nervous system, the SNS. And the more the sympathetic nervous system is fired, right, this tends to increase adrenaline. It increases cortisol. And if it's chronically fired, it will actually deplete some of the sex hormones. So chronic state, we'll see a decrease of DHEA, dihydroepiandosterone. And this is a precursor to uh, progesterone, estrogen, and in males, typically testosterone. So if we're in this chronic stressed out state, we're not getting much sleep, we can really fire that sympathetic nervous system. Now again, most people, because of stress and work, et cetera, and hidden infections, they're not activating enough of their parasympathetic nervous system, which really is the rest and digest. This is really responsible for an increase in DHEA. Let's see, an increase in growth hormone, an increase in progesterone. So all of these good things that happen from good parasympathetic nervous system activation. So this is a problem. I had a patient just last week. She was exercising, uh, doing CrossFit four days a week, uh, eight times total, eight hours of CrossFit a week. I cut her off. I cut it in half from eight to four. We made a couple other tweaks with her diet. We gave her some extra digestive support and she felt the best she had felt in a long time. And she was shocked because she was using CrossFit to give her, she was using CrossFit to whip a tired horse. Because a lot of people, they get this adrenaline rush over here. And adrenaline feels good. It can be really addicting to have that adrenaline going through their body. So this person, this patient was concerned, I don't know how I'm gonna function this next week without my workouts, without my you know, whipping the tired horse, if you will. And she felt significantly better because we had fixed a couple of things and we're supporting her nervous system working more in the parasympathetic nervous system window. So we're working on healing, we're working on digestion. And this person also had multiple gut infections too. So we had a lot of hidden stressors that were outside of the, uh, the external view, if you will. Now, just to kind of add a little bit more of the hard science to us, a journal out of, um, a journal pain out of a research uh, university over in University of Florida in Gainesville, they did a study looking at exercising chronic fatigue. So the study is relating more to a chronic fatigue population um, and a normal population. So chronic fatigue may not fall in the category of adrenal fatigue, but a lot of patients with adrenal fatigue probably would fit that criteria for chronic fatigue. 
But again, what they did was they did exercise. In this study, they did a hand exercise where they held a hand weight and they would squeeze it 50% of their max and they would hold it for 30 minutes. Now what they did, the first rep for 30 minutes, they put a blood pressure cuff around their elbow as soon as the exercise ended. So they squeeze for 30 minutes, they put the cuff right around the forearm. And what they do is they, tick, they took and they ranked their, um, their visual analog scale for fatigue, how, how fatigued they were on a scale of one to 10. They waited 30 minutes and did it again with the other arm. The only difference was they squeezed for 30 minutes, 50% of max, and then they didn't put the cuff on afterwards. So they allowed the metabolites that built up in the forearm muscle to go systemic. So what they found was exercise caused muscle breakdown. We know that, right? That's why you lift weights, muscle breaks down, it heals back a little bit stronger, right? A little bit bigger. The byproducts of muscle breakdown were lactic acid, ATP, and the various muscle metabolites. Now these metabolites, they hit these metaboreceptors. And when the metaboreceptors were activated, when that basically that um, blood pressure cuff was here cutting off the circulation, acting like a tourniquet, it kept all of these metabolites localized in the forearm muscle. And those metaboreceptors were significantly activated, causing an increased sense of fatigue. So when they kept all the metabolites localized, more fatigue. When they allow them to go systemic, less fatigue. So what that means is that exercise, just via the muscle breakdown, again, that's gonna activate more of the sympathetic nervous system, but those metabolites can affect those metaboreceptors and potentially cause more fatigue. Now, what, that, what does that mean to you? Well, here's my, my three questions you gotta answer positively to know if the exercise is hurting you or not. One, how do you feel after the exercise? Do you feel energized or not? Number two, could you mentally repeat the movements? And then number three, how do you feel the next day? Do you feel run down? Do you feel okay? Um, if, it's a no, if it's a new movement pattern that was increased, that was added in, well, you may feel a little sore. But again, you gotta answer three questions positively. Energized, can you feel like you repeat it emotionally afterwards? How do you feel, could you do it again? And then three um, then would be, how do you feel that later on that day or that next morning? Now you gotta be careful, because in this patient's case, she answered good to all of those questions, but based on her history and based off of her symptoms, I knew based on my clinical experience that we needed to cut down on her frequency, how much duration she was exercising. And when we did that, we saw significant improvements where even the next week, this person had not had a period for four months, gutter period. So this is a common thing I see because you gotta be careful with the three questions because the adrenaline can make you feel good. So I, I'm always very careful with the adrenaline kind of overriding and making them feel better than what the exercise is really doing to their nervous system internally. So this is the mechanism. We have the exercise potentially creating all these metabolites which have an effect locally at creating fatigue. Now we know in this study, when it was kept local, right, it caused problems. When it went systemic, it was less. What does that mean to you? It just means that if you're already fatigued, doing too much exercise could dramatically increase that fatigue and prevent healing. So think twice if you have adrenal and or thyroid or gut issues, less is gonna be more. Start with less, get with a good functional medicine doctor that gets to the root cause get your diet and lifestyle working. If you're not digesting foods, you're not gonna be able to assimilate and break down the building blocks you need to even heal those muscles. So make sure digestion's working. Make sure you're on a really good thyroid and adrenal program that's supporting your individual imbalances. And again, if, if you are doing CrossFit too much, or you're doing CrossFit now and you have hormonal issues, gut issues, or fatigue, think twice and reach out to someone like myself or another functional medicine doctor out there to get you the support you need so you can heal and find out how much CrossFit or how much exercise is good for you. CrossFit in itself can be a really great tool if it's prescribed precisely, if the person has enough rest and recovery, and if the person has a skill, enough skill to perform the movement properly. So make sure you fit into that criteria. Subscribe to the videos below and click on screen if you'd like to get a hold of me. Again, this is Dr. J signing off. Have a great day.